Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Denali-11. When last we listened, our group of adventurers had just defeated a pair of stone giants at Tobith Shrine. Several members had been injured, with Sir Omel, Knight of Bacchus, taking the brunt of the damage. After wounds were worked on, the party discovered several magical items had been uncovered during the battle. A stray giant boulder had damaged the shrine within, extricating the items. A mask of translation and a wand of unknown power had been recovered. The group also discovered that the silver bars sent by the Bayo were not solid, but instead had a lead core. The group has decided that a surprise attack on the unsuspecting dragon may be their best course of action. Having discovered a crude map on the giants, the party has voted and will head towards the coastal mountains. We begin with a mission in progress. I'm not sure if I mentioned this or not, but I'm quite tired and hungry, stated a demoralized Phidias. This caused the Zenobian cleric to stop in his tracks with everyone else halting behind him. Yes, we are well aware that you are tired. We are well aware that you are hungry. For the last four miles, your insensate for the last four miles, your bitching has been incessant. What do you want me to do about it? Harris the mage, with his hands on his knees stretching out, replied that a short rest may be beneficial considering the distance traveled. Sir Omel moved his armor around a bit and stated that he too could use a rest. We've been going at a pretty good clip and the mountains aren't too far away. Brother Stance of the Verte Order chimed in, pointing out that being rested may enhance their chances with the dragon if things go bad. A consternated Grish looked at Yolanda Two Blades and gave her a curt, Well? Her effortless response pointed out that they would all need to be in tip-top shape if combat occurred with the worm, and that the monk was right. The cleric pondered the situation and confirmed that his group was correct. My apologies, he said. I just want to get to the bottom of this problem. Gnome, come with me, advised Yolanda. We'll go find something to eat. Lead on, milady, was his quick response, and the pair ventured off into some scrubland with the mountains a short distance away. The pair crept low as they spotted a small herd of deer a short distance away. Creeping closer, the pair were nearly in striking distance when a twang broke out and felled one of the creatures. The rest of the herd leapt into the brush followed by several other arrows chasing them. Yolanda and Phidias stayed low to examine the owner of the arrows and watched as a small tribe of large gnolls moved into the clearing. The group spoke in guttural tones and Yolanda motioned for Phidias to go get the others. The rogue did as he was asked and disappeared quickly and quietly. Moments passed as the fighter continued to watch the tribe examine the fresh kill when she heard the snap of a stick behind her. Whirling around quickly, she surprised an owl who was venturing into the overgrowth. A quick kick to the groin brought the large creature to its knees and she promptly stabbed him through the throat with her boot dagger. As Yolanda got to her feet, she observed several knoll archers getting a bead on her. As they let their missiles fly, she hoisted the fresh humanoid corpse up, letting it get peppered by arrows. She drew one of her short swords and prepared to meet her adversaries. Three creatures closed on her, but behind them she observed a greenish smoke rising from the ground behind them. The rest of the tribe was caught in this air and began to choke violently. The trio leapt over some brush, landing on three sides of the female. Praying her armor would protect her, she focused on the knoll in the center, swiping it with her short sword and stabbing it through the mouth with her dagger. The flanking humanoids raised their weapons as she struck and she braced for the impact that was headed her way. Just before the creature's weapons hit the fighter, 
a loud smash was heard, and the head of the creature on the left turned to goo as the cleric crushed it with his mace. The humanoid on the right rang its sword off her protective armor and was thrust backwards from a leaping blow by the monk. The unfortunate was knocked back into the green mist and also began to choke and grab its throat. Stance, Yolanda, and Grish moved towards the choking Knowles when Harris the Mage said, The spell will dissipate soon. I wouldn't go in there just yet, he warned. A few minutes later, the Knowles had all turned pale and were dead, and the cloud was dissipating. Now you can go in, the wizard advised, but none dared to venture forward. Fine, he stated, and he moved in to loot the bodies of the dead. Bolstered by his efforts, the rest of the group entered and also began to loot the bodies. Phidias went to the body of the dead deer and asked if he could eat it. Sir Omel, standing guard, looked down at the creature and said, Be my guest, thief, but the tiny rogue passed on the opportunity. We all have iron rations, boomed the cleric. I suggest we eat some and be on our way. After examining several bodies, Yolanda Two Blades asked Harris what spell he had used. Stinking cloud, he responded with a broad smile. That was the first time I've ever gotten to use it. Well, it worked well for us, piped up Stance the monk. Grish asked him how he calculated the area of effect, which brought the wizard into a strange silence. As the rest of the party looked to Harris for an answer, he sheepishly repeated that he had never actually used it in combat. Wait, you mean you could have gassed us? exclaimed Yolanda. Grish shook his head and pointed out that a trail leading to the base of the mountains was close. Come on, if we hurry, we'll be there by dark. As the group reached the base of the collection of mountains, Brother Stance spotted a winged figure swooping over the steep cliffs. The group moved to the cliffside and leaned over the edge, spotting the large black creature flying low until it curved around behind the mountain. I'd say we're in the ripe spot, mused Sir Omel. The thing must have a lair on the other side of the mountains, pondered Yolanda out loud. Well, we know it has help in the form of giants, said Phidias, and that opening over there is large enough for those monsters to go in. Perhaps the cave complex leads to the dragon. The group nodded, and with the day ending, they moved into the winding tunnels. It's a wee bit dark in here, said Harris. We may need torches. Brother Stance exited the tunnel, and snapped off some old branches from a nearby tree. After searching his bag, he pulled forth some oily rags. Phidias broke out the flint and steel and sparked the makeshift torches to light. The group looked at each other and Sir Omel stated, Stay sharp, everyone, before delving into the crack on the side of the mountain. As the rest of the group followed in behind, Phidias asked if he thought Kellogg's was okay. My tiny friend, I'd be more worried about your future than his. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.